First of all, I'm feeling great. I don't know about you. How's that? Today, President Trump made his first public appearance since he tested positive for the coronavirus. Good evening and thank you for joining us. I'm Alicia Summers. Steve Price has the night off. During the White House event called a peaceful protest for law and order, the president discussed COVID-19, racial justice, the economy, his Democratic opponent, Joe Biden, who is on the campaign trail in Pennsylvania tonight. Michael George has more. First of all, I'm feeling great. I don't know about you. How is everyone feeling? Five days after leaving the hospital, President Trump spoke from the White House balcony, addressing conservative supporters gathered on the South Lawn. We're starting very, very big with our rallies and with our everything because we cannot allow our country to become a socialist nation. His remarks focused largely on the November 3rd election, but the president touched on the coronavirus that landed him in the hospital just over a week ago. Science, medicine will eradicate the China virus once and for all. We'll get rid of it all over the world. As he resumes public events, it's not clear if the president has tested negative. On Friday night, he appeared in what was billed as a remote medical evaluation by Dr. Mark Siegel, a Fox News medical contributor. Are you tested? I, I, heard, you, I heard you said you were going to test again today. Have you been retested? Uh, I have been retested, and I, I haven't even found out numbers or anything yet, but I've been retested, and I know I'm at either the bottom of the scale or free. Democratic nominee Joe Biden said the president needs to be open about his status. That he is clear. He is not a spreader. President Trump is recovering from the coronavirus, and so is America. A new Trump campaign ad focuses on the COVID-19 pandemic. Infectious disease doctor Anthony Fauci is also in the ad and appears to praise the president. President Trump tackled the virus head on, as leaders should. I can't imagine that anybody could be doing more. But in that interview excerpt, Fauci is talking about the White House Coronavirus Task Force, not the president. Michael George, CBS News. President Trump plans to hold his first official campaign rally since his release from the hospital Monday night in Florida. Tonight, San Diego County has surpassed 50,000 coronavirus cases since the pandemic began. Health officials are reporting 320 new cases today out of more than 11,000 tests, a positive rate of about 3%. Four new outbreaks were reported, two in restaurant or bar settings and two in business settings. There have been 38 new outbreaks in the past week, well above the trigger of seven. Four new deaths were reported across the county. That total is now 825. New state guidance in effect today eases restrictions on private gatherings. It now allows up to three households to meet up outdoors. The rules say gatherings must be outdoors with social distancing. They even give guidelines for singing and limits, time limits. News 8's Heather Hope has reaction from San Diegans and local leaders. Yes, and talking to people at Balboa Park today, getting their consensus, some welcoming the new rules, saying having up to three households gets them back to some sense of normalcy. Yet some are calling the new guidelines an overreach, not wanting to government to tell them what they can do in their own backyards. Guidelines are a little bit ridiculous. That seems silly to me. Sounding off on California's mandatory requirements that say all gatherings are limited to no more than three households and must be held outside where guests are at least six feet apart and wearing a face covering. It messes with people's rights as Americans to get too nitpicky with that. Or listen to what the scientific research is showing and make common sense decisions. And if you're sick, don't go to a party. <laughs> the new rules go on to say gatherings should be two hours or less. The host should collect names of all attendees and their information in case contact tracing is needed later. With the government telling us how much we can breathe outside and what kind of notes we need to take when people visit, that's just ridiculous. The rules say singing, chanting, shouting are strongly discouraged as the activity increases the release of droplets in the air. That's, that's, that's pushing the guidelines. That's a little bit <laughs> insane. Know, that's hard for us because I've got a singer right here. Yeah. So that's Instrumental music is allowed as long as the musicians maintain social distance. One musician per household and avoid playing instruments like the trumpet or clarinet. How do they know there are only three? Like, And how will the rules be enforced? 
I also think the police have enough on their plate. Supervisor Nathan Fletcher, co-chair of the county's COVID-19 subcommittee states, I hope this will bring some relief to families and friends who want to safely and responsibly gather. With all these steps, we have to continually remind one another to continue to be safe and also slow the spread. While County Supervisor Jim Desmond states, this is more absurdity from the state. These guidelines read like a comedy sketch. This is just more big government intervening in our lives. We should allow adults to be able to make their own decisions. And I like to think that our public health officials are trying to keep us all reasonably safe. COVID is still a real thing, so uh, as long as they keep that in mind and are taking the necessary precautions. Again, those new state guidelines go into effect here in San Diego County starting today, asking all those who host people with close to three households at their homes to be able to keep a contact sheet in an effort to keep up with contact tracing. Heather Hope, News 8. All right, Heather, thank you. And while some restrictions have been lifted little by little in California, youth sports is still sidelined. News 8's Tim Blodgett attended a protest downtown and heard from frustrated parents and athletes. Since the original stay-at-home order in March, California still had the lockdown on youth sports like soccer, baseball, and football. And that has many parents and athletes sounding off. Off the sideline. On the field. Around 100 fired up parents and athletes protesting the continued shutdown of youth sports in California out front of the county administration building this morning. Newsom and the posse, they need to blow the whistle, get them out on the field. Yeah. This is ridiculous. We can't keep doing this to the kids. Since yeah. March 19th of this year, the state of California effectively suspended all youth sports leagues to slow the spread of the coronavirus. All school, club, and recreational youth sports have been put on hold. But since July 30th, the California Department of Public Health has allowed practices under specific conditions. We've seen that outdoors is actually one of the safest places for kids to be and for people to be. And so why not let them play? Heather Worms is the mother of two kids that both play club sports in San Diego. She says that her family has been traveling out of state with their teams just so they can play in competitive games. My daughter's club and several clubs in San Diego are starting to travel outside of state lines to play in tournaments and games. Uh, some of the leagues are moving to play in Arizona, Utah, Nevada. So at the end of the day, we're all going and, and playing because we know that our kids need it for their mental health. And the bond between the girls, they're like your sisters now. Yeah, these are my best friends. Yeah. For these girls of Albion Soccer Club, the sports happening on the field was just one of the things they liked about joining a team. You can just go to the field and then forget about all of your problems and just hang out with all your friends and do what you love to do. For the foreseeable future, youth sports in California will remain shut down, but that's not stopping parents, coaches, and athletes from letting their voices be heard. At the end of the day, through all of this, the kids are paying the biggest price. I just want my kids to be able to play the sports that they love. Tim Blodgett, News 8. Ah, the past few days have been much needed relief from the constant heat, but that's all about to change once again. Meteorologist Sean Stiles joins us now with a look at your microclimate forecast. Sean? Well, I got to tell you, we're looking at uh, some big changes heading our way and along the Gulf states. They're also looking at some changes, things finally drying out in and around Louisiana as what was Hurricane Delta is now turned into a post tropical cyclone moving across parts of Louisiana into Mississippi now and eventually will be making its way up into Tennessee and eventually up into, of all places, Pennsylvania. Now, as far as what they're dealing with here, they've got a flash flood watch in the green areas here. We've got a tornado warning in and around the red areas. And here in the orange or yellow areas, a tornado watch. So they are not out of the woods in the southeastern part of the country. Here in San Diego, looks like a couple more days of cool weather and then a big change. Heat is on the way. I'll have that for you coming up in just a bit. All right, enjoy the weekend while you can. Thank you, Sean. Two black bears, Jackie and her club Russell, are headed to the final destination, a sanctuary in Texas. The two were wild born, but had become too used to humans, frequently roaming campsites for food. The bears were loaded up today by the Lions, Tigers, and Bears rescue team and started their 1,400 mile journey to Cleveland and they're gonna be at a Black Beauty Ranch there, an affiliate of the Humane Society. Coming